Is that better? Already. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Blaine Parker. I'm a basis species uh, coordinator for the Columbia River Intertribal Fish Commission, which is a policy advisory group for the four Columbia Basin Treaty Tribes, the Nez Perce Tribe of Idaho, the Yakima Nation of Washington, the Warm Springs Tribe, and the Umatilla Tribe of Oregon. So today I'm going to be talking about northern pike, a looming threat to salmon and steelhead restoration in the Columbia River Basin. And a disclaimer, I have never touched a pike or seen one in the flesh in my life, but I've read a lot. Um, so <laughs> I've been trying to, I'm actually been trying to hook up with Nick Bean uh, from the Kalispells to get up there, but we've had kind of the winter of winters and the spring of springs this year. So we haven't been able to get together yet to do some field work, but hopefully next week. Uh, so a little bit of background. My presentation today is going to, we're going to touch on Northern Pike their history in the Columbia River Basin, um, a little bit about their life history, what makes them such a threat. Uh, currently, their status in the basin, you know, they are invasive uh, and they're not protected species, but they're not contained either. Um, like, and I'm gonna go over the current management strategies. Um, I've broken this out into three different areas, upstream of Grand Coulee Dam, uh, downstream of Grand Coulee Dam to Priest Rapids, and then from Priest Rapids Dam down to Bonneville and then what we're doing for future efforts. So a little background here. Um, Northern Pike, uh, we're not native to Columbia River Basin, but we're e illegally introduced into Western Montana in the early 1950s. And from there, they've followed the flow of water and they've moved uh, downstream the Clark Fork and into the Pond Array. They were also illegally introduced into Coeur d'Alene Lake in the 1970s. Uh, they are a very uh, tremendous sport fish and um, Fishermen being who they are sometimes will, like anybody else, will move their favorite fish around, which is known as Johnny Apple seeding. Um, and people do it with plants, they do it with animals. Um, fishermen are no different. It was first documented in the Pond Array in 2004. Uh, was subsequently documented in Lake Roosevelt uh, seven years later. And, and during those time periods, uh, a number of management efforts have uh, been initiated and are currently going on to this day and the pike are moving closer to grand coulee um in the last recorded close contact with grand coulee was a large pike that was caught in 2018 there could be more recently but the bulk of the pike tend to reside in the upper half of grand coulee reservoir also known as lake roosevelt um the scary thing is we've had two suspect find findings in 2021 and i'll talk about those in a couple of minutes um, so a little bit more background geographically about northern pike and, and where they've been found and where they're na native to. So the solid tan region kind of centered on the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region, um, that's their native range. All the little dots, every place else, look, I think they're actually diamonds, are where pike have either been introduced legally or illegally to areas outside of their range. So clear down in Texas, California, Arizona, Utah, um, not in Florida, which is amazing because Florida has like a crazy amount of non-native species, but um, they're not down there. Um, if you noticed in the upper section of Montana, there's a little isolated patch of tan. That is the Saskatchewan River. So, and actually they are native in parts of Montana, historically um, in that river basin, but that is it. And then of course, in the parts of the Missouri right on the edge here. So they're often, they have a variety of nicknames. Um, Water Wolf was one that I found uh, someplace online. Um, and again, just to recap, they're not native. They are upstream of Grand Coulee. Uh, hopefully they're not downstream of Grand Coulee. They're a ravenous predator, and that's what I think people um, really key in on, and, and it's rightly so. So you see some photos here. You guys can see my cursor. This pike here wasn't a very large pike, but it was full of just dozens and dozens of baby sockeye salmon. This is from Alaska. This is a pike that was caught, I believe, on Lake Roosevelt or on the Pond Array. had a couple ducklings inside of it. This is the uh, former state record in Idaho, 38-pound fish. That was supplanted a couple weeks ago by a 40 pound fish. And a pike this size can eat, you know, a whole salmon. Um, and they're very fecund. They're a long lived species, but the females have a tremendously large egg mass. 
Um, they're broadcast spawners over shallow submerged vegetation, generally right after ice out when those first edges of the ponds and backwaters in calm areas are first warming. And then you've got all that dark vegetation underneath that creates a nice microhabitat for those eggs to be deposited. They do not make a red like a salmon. Um, and this is why uh, pike are so amazing. It's like the, the camouflage on these things is incredible. They are not a uh, pursuit predator. They are an ambush predator. They sit and wait for food to come to them and they strike very quickly and often very successfully. So as I mentioned earlier, if it moves, pike will eat it. Uh, here's another picture of a, a, a pike that had a bat inside of it. Um, the pike on the right here were taken from uh, work on Lake Roosevelt. These are adults, kokanee salmon, which are basically almost the size of our Columbia River sockeye. And you can see that, you know, this fish is quite large compared to the pike it ate it. And pike can and regularly eat fish over half their body length. So that makes them a tremendous predator on very small fish, juvenile salmon, as well as adults. So this is a video that I think may work. We're going to give it a shot. And if not, we'll keep on moving. Let's see, I'm going to click it. And here we go. Hopefully my computer will load this. See the size of that? Oh no, honey. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh, God, took it. That was crazy. Poor mama. She tried to protect it. Oh, we're just like, we lose my presentation. It's kicked me out to something else. Give me a second here, folks. Let's go down here and start over. There we go. Two. There we go. I think that's ready. Oh, there you go. Okay, um, back to so so currently this is what's happening um, above Grand Coulee Dam. There is intensive netting uh, operations by three tribes and WDFW on the Columbia Lake Roosevelt and also on the Ponderé systems. The netting uh, being conducted by the Colville tribe, the Kalispells, and the Spokane tribes, um, and they're really focusing on catching pike. Uh, particularly in the river system, the, the Ponderé in early spring, when the fish are moving into rearing and spawning areas um, where they're most vulnerable. Um, in addition to the, the on-reservoir work, um, the Coville tribe is also has a bounty program on pike. So sport fishermen, um, there is a kill and, and retain uh, for all pike in, in that region. But if you catch a pike and you bring turn the head into a variety of a number of check stations, you will receive a ten dollar bounty for that fish. So folks are really serious about you know keeping those fish down to a very low level. You're not going to eradicate them, but you can keep them to a manageable level where they're not going to impact the other resources in the region. It takes a lot of work, and it's never ending. Uh, downstream of Grand Coulee to Priest Rapids. The focus there is to leverage existing programs, uh, existing field work that's done on other species, um, creel surveys that are out there looking, you know, creeling just standard fishing uh, surveys that are being done uh, for all species, but they're also, you know, notifying the public that they're looking for pike 
and they're they're asking fishers about it. Um, there is a integrated eDNA sampling plan across those reservoirs upstream um, in conjunction with the PUDs, which I forgot to list on here. They're a big proponent of this work, as well as coordinating with Washington and the Colville tribe in this region. Um, and this past winter, a rapid response plan was drafted uh, with guidance from the Colville tribe and the state of Washington is currently working on an additional rapid response plan in the event that pike are found in this region. Downstream, uh, pre strapis to Bonneville Dam, the Columbia River Indian Tribal Fish Commission received a grant from the Bureau of Indian Affairs in 2022 um, to do northern pike. Uh, it's kind of a preemptive monitoring in the sense that pike probably aren't found here um, that we know of, but I'll talk about that in just a second. But our focus is to start surveying likely habitat and, uh, sites that pike would utilize for spawning, as well as, um, you know, categorizing the quality of that habitat, utilizing pike um, habitat indicators, you know, shallow areas versus deep water, presence of submerged macrophytes, all those things which actually work well as far as indicating the optimal presence for pike utilization. Um, in our work, we've identified um, approximately 148 sites in that stretch between Bonneville Dam and Free Strapis Dam, a tremendous amount of area. Uh, within that area, there's two large wildlife refuges with the Fish and Wildlife Service and a variety of um, backwater sloughs, isolated uh, lakes that are created from the railroad and the highway that goes that go up and down both sides of the Columbia River. Our focus is going to be on eDNA sampling these waters but with follow-up gillnet sampling in the larger systems where a water sampler two probably isn't going to really tell the story of what's in there. Um, and we're looking at this work to occur in the field seasons of 23 and 24. And we've applied for additional grants to continue this work down the road to at least get the whole thing covered. It's turned out to be a much larger area than we initially thought. Um, the suspects... Uh, suspected areas I talked about earlier um, or findings are this dried up little creature down the lower right corner, which was has pike DNA in it. It was found near Burbank, Washington on the shore of the Columbia River in May of 2021. Somebody's got their mic open and they're eating breakfast. If they could maybe mute their mic would be great. Um, and um, in the same year in September of 2021, we had a tribal fisher who caught a pike off his scaffold near John Day Dam and killed it, left it on the scaffold because it was nighttime. He went back to bed and uh, the next morning it was gone. So we don't have a body. We don't have any DNA evidence because it was washed off um, and combined with all the other fish blood there. Um, so I have been posting wanted posters for pike in those fishing tribal access areas for a number of years. So he is pretty positive what he caught. So that kind of chilled my blood a little bit. And that's been the focus for getting this work started on this section of the Columbia between Priest Rapids and Bonneville Dams. Um, Want to characterize something that's often uh, uh, a mistake or a, 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 a confusion by folks. We've got two species here. We have a native northern pike minnow and we have the invasive northern pike so names are similar but they're obviously not the same fish uh, the northern pike minnow is native it's a predator fish but its impact on salmonis has been magnified due to the changing of the river into a series of reservoirs and and dams which have then created feeding stations which can find the smolts to certain areas and allow this predator fish to be a more effective predator. Um, you know, it's it's been renamed. It was formerly called something else, which I won't mention, but most of you probably know this. And this tribal name is really, they call it big mouth. Um, but as you can see, looking at that in a northern pike, they're very different. And the key thing is northern pike minnow don't have any teeth in their mouth. Um, so smooth gums, and uh, they just inhale their food. On the other hand, the left side, we've got the, the northern pike, which we've been talking about. And uh, so I've been 
you know, focusing on explanations and presentations to make sure people don't get Northern Pike and Northern Pike Minnow confused. And this is just a little bit of a, a background that will lead into one of the other talks down the road. But um, this is a, a slide I actually had done for another talk that dealt with an invasive plant called flowering rush, which is a submerged aquatic plant. And all the areas here shown in red are potential habitat for flowering rush, which also makes really good northern pike habitat. And as you can see, significant areas below McNary Dam uh, leading down into the left side where the wildlife refuge begins. Um, that's all in red. That's all potential pike habitat uh, for rearing as well as feeding and, um, you know, predating on juvenile salmonids. So there's a lot of habitat out there. Um, it could be exacerbated greatly by the presence of flowering rush. Um, so future efforts, um, you know, we're just going to have to stay on the, the mark with northern pike. We're going to um, have to continue our control and monitoring efforts upstream where we do have pike to keep their numbers low. So there's less chance of those fish in training out of the system and working their way into the anadromous zone. Um, and, you know, they're basically mowing the grass now. Um, they got them down to a, a pretty good level, but they're going to, you know, folks are going to need to continue. The funding is going to have to be long term and to stay on top of this problem. Um, if they are found downstream in the United Zone, uh, the rapid response plans will kick in and um, hopefully we'll have a quick and swift control effort in that region and likely we'll end up mowing the grass down there as well. Um, what's really important is that all the fish management agencies, both state, federal, and tribal, are all on the same page with northern pike management um, because it is a very real and, and looming danger for uh, anadromous fish within the Columbia River Basin, as well as up into the snake systems. Um, we need additional Northern Pike surveys and management training are needed for zone six. Um, when we get our work going here next month, we're gonna be finding out, we're gonna be learning a lot of things on the fly as we go and do this, but we're also gonna be creating a rapid response plan of our own to look at key areas where we're gonna need help. And as all of the things with invasives, education and outreach is the key. We've got to make sure that people understand that it's not okay to move fish and it's not okay to particularly move non-native predators. Um, if you want to go fish for them, you got to go where they already are, but don't bring that problem into new areas. And I think that's all I have. If there's any questions, are we going to hold those till the end of the session? I'm not sure. I'll turn that back over to 